Hi, everybody. This is David Valade with Alta Vista Technology. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about Sage Intact and the top three things that I love about Sage Intact for nonprofits in particular. That's right. And if you ask me tomorrow, I might have a different three. But this, uh, as of this recording, these are the top three things that I think are just great about Sage Intact, especially if you're a nonprofit. All right, so here we see Sage Intact. I have a dashboard, a lovely dashboard. I'll zoom in maybe a little bit just to fit a little bit more on the screen, a little bit easier to see. Maybe that's too far. There we go. And uh, the first thing I was going to talk about is uh, talking about dimensions. So we're going to another dimension. I'm going to go over here to my accounts payable to make a point. All right, and as we go, we'll point out a few things along the way. Not really the, the focus of the, the video today, but just to point out a few things. So here's my accounts payable uh, screen. This is one way that I could show accounts payable. Super useful. If I had a clerk who is new to Sage Intact, they could pick this up very, very quickly, very intuitive. I'm going to uh, show those dimensions I alluded to by entering an AP bill. So we'll do that. I'll click on enter a bill like so. And I'll tab over here to my vendor. I get to pick that. Now, in real life, if I had a uh, piece of paper in front of me, a bill from uh, my vendor, I could start typing the name of the vendor. You can also hit the little drop down here to pick someone. Um, I see Able Courier is in the list. So pretend I had Able Courier. I had a bill for them in front of me. I type the letter A. Those are all my vendors that start with an A. I type the letter B. Hey, that's getting better. And I can keep typing or I could just arrow down and pick Able Courier just like that. Put in my invoice number like so, something like making this up. And a, few, a bunch of things have defaulted in. As you can see, I, you can see that I have my um, different addresses, terms codes, all the good stuff. I can have a place here to put an attachment. That's uh, something good. Uh, by the way, when it comes to attachments, we have another video about how you can do AP automation directly within Sage Intact by just uploading a PDF copy of a bill and the system will do the rest. So check out that video if you haven't seen it, but that's for another time. Right now, we're just gonna scroll down here and let's look at these entries. So immediately a few things are happening here. Uh, an account number is defaulted in. That account number was uh, assigned to that vendor. So when we picked the vendor, the account number came in automatically. And now these, what are these other things here? So if I were to try to highlight this like a fancy person, I can see these things right here are, well, even this one over here, these are all dimensions to me. So what dimen dimensions, I just love dimensions. I've worked in other systems over my career where we didn't have dimensions. And now that I've lived uh, with dimensions, I can never go back. I love them that much. Why do I love them? Well, if you take a look at the account number, I have a nice, simple four digit account number. That's great, yep. But then I have these other things. So if I were in a nonprofit, I need to keep very close eyes on my expenses and revenue and break that down into different, different uh, buckets, really. So I need to know, like, is that associated with a grant? Is that money, in this case, this bill for Able Courier, are those, is that grant restricted? And if so, how is it restricted? Temporarily, permanently? There's different rules have changed on that over the years, but what's my restriction level? I can pick that. Is that associated with a fund? What about a department? And so on. You might not need, if you're a nonprofit watching this video, you might not need all of those uh, dimensions, and that's fine. We don't have to have them all. You might need more than you see here, and that's also fine. We can add user-defined dimensions, so we can have even more still. But watch what happens here. This is not a very difficult process. My account number defaulted in, if you'll recall. So I came in here, I picked my vendor. I typed in a bill number. That's the invoice number of the vendor. And I'm going to pick a grant. Uh, let's say this is uh, same as I picked the vendor. If I knew the number or if I knew, and that could be alphanumeric. That's just however we want that to behave. Uh, if I wanted this to be for my outreach campaign, I see it there. I could just click on it, of course. But if I were a typer, I could do the letter O and I can find it just that way. And do you see what happened there? I tabbed off of that and immediately the restriction, which we already knew, uh, that is come in as unrestricted. A fund has defaulted in, my general fund. My department has faulted in. And really, I am poised now to pick a site. This could have defaulted in as well, just how we have it set up. And I can put in an amount and carry on. If you're curious, you might be asking yourself, well, how did it know? How did the system know what to pick? 
Well, we have a lot of tricks, actually. We have a lot of things we could do with that. Uh, we can do um, something called a dimension relationship. So when you pick one dimension, other things that are related to it happen automatically. That's a really handy tip. Uh, another thing you can do is if I hit the little view on this particular grant, I can zoom in. Maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger. And this is all information about the grant, all the things about, uh, about it, how much we've spent on it, different dates involved, and so on. But look at the dimensions area here. We've said anytime I pick that grant, go ahead and default these different values in. I have it set in this system that I could change that, and that's okay. Uh, if something couldn't default in, maybe this is a grant that actually could be multiple departments, you might leave that blank and let the user pick. But that little bit of functionality here, this is everywhere you can see an account number, whether I'm making a journal entry, whether I'm receiving cash, where mother, money, money is coming in. No matter what the transaction is, I have the ability to tag it to one or more dimensions, and we can even require one or more dimensions, and it's not painful to use, and now the information is captured in that way so I can get at it later. Uh, as an aside here, I see the allocation idea. We have a few videos on allocations as well. Uh, this is a nice little thing where if I wanted to split grants or do different things, ooh, look at that, some fields have grayed out. And I could uh, expand that and I can see, hey, look at that, I've split this out in like a 60-40 ratio between um, a different, it could be different grants or funds or whatever. In this case, it looks like um, uh, this <laughs> couple funds here, but the same, uh, different grants perhaps. So anyway, however this one is set up to, to split up, that's what it will do. All right, so dimensions, we said. All right, top number one thing that I love for nonprofits in Sage Intact, I love dimensions. I'll hit cancel on this right here. And uh, let me talk about something else that I love. I just mentioned allocations a second ago. That's what we call a segue. Uh, there's another thing that I love. It's a module that even companies that are or organizations that are not nonprofits would benefit from and do love. There's something called a dynamic allocation. So let's talk about that for a moment. Um, a second ago, I just picked an allocation where I can allocate funds based on a percentage. I can say, uh, in that case, it was an AP bill. You know, I can split that up to different grants or departments or whatever I see fit based on some sort of numeric allocation, so percentages or whatever I want to do. Uh, so with that in mind, I want to show something else. I'm going over to General Ledger, note the restriction release. That's interesting. I'll save that maybe for another day. And I'll go past that because I want to show a different kind of allocation. So the example we just did, we talked about a little allocation as an aside where I can split things up. That's great when the numbers are known when the percentages are set. But I see something here, this endowment fees. Maybe I'll filter this list a little bit here. I'll just type endow, just to shorten it up, I can see all my endowment allocations. Let's suppose, here's a, here's a pretend scenario. Let's pretend I'm getting in fees for all of my endowments. And let's say I'm categorizing my endowments as, you know, those are different grants. And I want, if I have certain kinds of grants and I have fees associated with them, I want to allocate those fees. And let's just make this up as an example. I want to allocate them based on the value of the grant. Not bad. Now, if I had, you know, some spreadsheets at the ready, I could absolutely do a calculation and I can handle that. Wouldn't it be better though? I mean, the numbers are changing, right? So I'm getting different fees. Those amounts are, are coming in all the time and they're different. But the values that I have in those grants are changing all the time too. So it's not like I can just set a percentage and leave it alone. I actually have to keep updating that and updating that. What if I get more fees that come in? What if that's happening while my different uh, valuations are changing? Well, that's what this does. So I'll go over to my endowment fees and let's just hit the view on that. And I can see, let's read through this, broken down into a few pieces. We have a longer video that does a deeper dive on this, but just to point it out, uh, first there's this area here that says dimension treatment. And that's where we define the rules of the game here. We say, uh, I want to allocate those endowment fees over different dimensions. Which ones? Well, we've picked the focus right here. Oops, sorry, highlight it like so, if I can, steady mouse skills. All right, so uh, over to the department and the project or grant, okay. So that means I can have fees and I don't, I could just 
pick um, a default uh, department and grant doesn't matter because I know that this will come over there, uh, run a routine after the fact and put the money where it needs to go. Interesting. Okay. So we get to say, and you see there's all these other dimensions that if we're just for this purpose of this demo, we don't have to worry about. We're just focusing on these two. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the source, what's the money we want to allocate? Well, I have a group of accounts called endowment fees. And I'll click on that and let's see how it's set up. Well, that's my my uh, one account. This could be many, many, many accounts. Um, but in this example, it's a group of one. So anything that hits this 5205 admin fees, that's the source. That's the, the source of the fees that I want to allocate. Easy enough. That makes sense. Okay. So first step, we said how we're going to treat which dimensions we care about. Here we said what money do we, do we want to split up? And finally, for our purposes, what's the basis? How do we do the math? How are we going to split it up? Well, we're going to split it up by the value in our investment account. I'll drill in on that. This could be multiple accounts again. In this case, well, another simple example, just one account. So if things are changing quickly, you can start to see the value here. If you have a lot of churn, a lot of things happening, this will save a ton of time. More I can talk about on that. But I'll just uh, leave here and let's just take a look at the entry I made. I can see it's posted an entry. You can schedule this so it runs automatically. Run every night. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, back out the prior entry or record the delta of any changes that happened. It's up to you. But let's look at this entry. Okay, and nice little entry. This one's not terribly exciting, but it does tell the story. It, if I look down here, I can see that I have $5,000 that is being credited out of this uh, admin fees account, only to be put right back in, but now I'm changing my dimensions. I'm taking it out of these two uh, shared um, little buckets here. So my shared department and my shared project doesn't have to be that way, but that's just how this one was made. And allocating it over these different um, projects or grants. Pretty, pretty good. Now, if you're looking at this and you're saying, that's amazing, Dave. I sure like that. That's going to save a ton of time. Well, it probably will. But you you might be thinking, uh, how did it do that? What's the math behind that? How do I know? I'm sure my auditors just are going to look at this and want to ask, ask a lot of questions to say, how did I get there? Well, that's, that's fine. There's a little click right here to see, here's the calculation that went into it. So this is all the information here where it describes the rationale. I can see that this ran. It restates all of the rules of our game, but it has this little source pool calculation. This is a clickable link, a basis that's a clickable link. I'll click on this in a moment. It actually downloads an Excel file and then all the way down to the target entry. So I can even look at that to see here's the percentages to a ridiculous number of decimal places on how it allocated everything over all my different grants. Okay, and if I were to click on that, I, I downloaded this previously, but I'll pull it over on screen here. This is my Excel file, like so. And this shows the value of all the grants as of the time this snapshot was taken. So I can see I have, it looks like $90,000 of grant value in this account. And whatever the ratios, whatever the splits are amongst these different grants, this would be used in that equation. In this example, it doesn't look like very challenging math. It looks like we could figure that out, I bet. But that's the point. You don't have to. The system will just run, do that all the time. If I had 100 grants, if I had 200 grants, if the values of those grants are changing daily, then this saves a ton of time. You can use this for all sorts of things, obviously. Um, if I go back to my list of, uh, I'll just say I'm done right here. And I'm done on my GL entry. So we're back over here on my list of uh, allocation dimensions. I have 21 set up here and just scanning the list. Uh, endowment fees, gains, releasing restrictions, another way you can do that. Allocating fringe benefits. If you just kind of scan the list here, even settling up my do twos and do froms if I have those, all can be handled with this one tool where you can set it up one time and just let it run on a schedule automatically or on demand, whatever you, where, however you see fit. Okay, 
And finally, a lot of, so many things, I was trying to think of what should I name as my third thing for my number three most favorite thing in Sage and Tech for nonprofits. And I don't know, I, I, I figured I might as well just go to the old traditional, you can't forget it, it's easy to overlook with everything else. What, what about the financials? So if you haven't seen the financials before, uh, I have in this demo company, 115 financials that are right here. Uh, I probably have a few demo uh, company, like a couple examples that I've made in this environment here and there, just for um, just to tell a story. But the point is, you'll have something like that, and they'll all work on day one when you start out with a nonprofit implementation. And just to show my work a little bit, there's this whole library here where I can see, well, there's my 990 statement of expense, 990. So if you're a nonprofit and you have to do a 990, if you don't see it, you could install it right there and you'd have it. And if you would like that to be a little bit different for whatever reason, that's okay too, you can change it. And if you just look at the options here, you can uh, have this set to be run on a schedule and sent to different people. Any report you see here can run on a dashboard. Um, that's one my favorite way actually, because you can drill in if you see something that's interesting. Let me just run this one as an example. I'll just pick this 990 report. And just like that, there's my statement of revenue and showing everything that I needed here. And if I were to say, oh, tuition fees, 1.6 million, I sure have a question about that. What could that be? I could just click and drill in and see all the good information you know, broken down by funds and departments and everything else I care about. So kind of a cheating little answer for my final thing to say reporting because reporting and dashboarding, I just love so much, but it kind of brings a full circle. That's why you do everything at the beginning we, we talked about with dimensions. By doing that, adding just a very, adding hardly any work at all, we get that information and with that, we're able to get great things like this. Reports that are ready made for us to use that we can share with the people, the key decision makers in our organization. Anyway, a lot more we could talk about here. Thanks everyone for watching and along here. And if you have any other questions, feel free to drop us a line over at altavistatech.com. Thanks everyone.